Hello folks, I'm Ed Overstreet and uh, I manage a pretty new YouTube channel called the Night Sky Imaging Channel and I have been uh, imaging the sun today and I was going to uh, go through the process that I use when uh, I take flats and uh, apply the flats uh, when I process an auto stacker. So let's uh, head over to the sun and uh, let me show you what I mean. Okay, we're on the sun, and uh, earlier today I was imaging uh, a time lapse, and the uh, telescope has uh, shifted somewhat, but I was uh, imaging the uh, the spot right here, and I had it centered in this reticle. Uh, I'm going to move north, and uh, that should uh, actually south when I need to move. <coughs> Get it over a little bit, and then I want to come down, which is uh, going to be west. And while I was imaging the sun, uh, and I mentioned this in a, another video that I just recently took, <coughs> um, I saw a uh, prominence, uh, an eruption on the rim of the, the sun happening about right here. And uh, it's been a while since it happened, but uh, there may be some effects from it. So let's raise the gain up on sharp cap. And nope, it's gone. But an hour, an hour, an hour ago, uh, there was a massive uh, eruption right here, and uh, I could see it while I was surfacing. Uh, while I was imaging the surface, which is unusual because the surface is uh, uh, using a quark chromosphere really doesn't uh, reveal anything uh, but black uh, other than the surface. So uh, at any rate, uh, it was exciting. But uh, let's go into uh, let's go into uh, the uh, process of taking flats and <coughs> flats are used to help re uh, eliminate uh, spots like this one, this one, this one, this one. Here's a real dark spot and uh, not to be confused with something on the surface of the sun and here's another spot. Uh, they're easier to see for me I know from experience uh, as I look at my YouTube videos they're not as easy but uh, more than likely you have some dust that's accumulated on your optical train and uh, there is a pretty easy solution for removing uh, that dust when you are uh, taking flats. So the uh, thing that I would recommend doing in order to take flats is to center the sun uh, and fill up your screen, uh, provided your image scale uh, pr provides that. And so let me show you uh, what I'll do to do that. And let's... Uh, North, uh, south. Again, I'm backwards. Let's change the speed to uh, 16 sidereal. And let's move it over pretty quickly. And, and then west. So, as you can see, uh, keep it from drifting. As you can see, uh, we have filled the sun, and I want to drop the exposure down some to kind of match the exposure that I used when I was imaging the surface. And then I want to bring up my electronic focuser. It's a moonlight. If you don't have a focuser, you're going to need to, to defocus your picture so that it will look something like this. I'm going to, uh, you can go either way. I'm going to uh, bring the uh, focuser out. A thousand steps. I may go just another thousand steps and that removes the surface detail and all you see left are are the uh, issues from dust and uh, other accumulations that are on your optical train whether it's the sensor or the camera. I use a quirk chromosphere. It could be on the quirk chromosphere. Uh, I doubt very seriously we're picking up any uh, 
uh, dust from the uh, telescope optics uh, at all. Uh, they, they usually are just, you know, I have some dirty telescopes, but uh, what you're seeing is between the, uh, uh, the front of the telescope and your camera sensor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go up here and uh, change this name so I can help locate it'll help me locate the uh, to flat and then I'm going to go to quick capture and I'll take 500 so I'll do another 500 I don't take any more than that that's a, that's a gracious plenty uh, and let's take another Actually, I'm going to move the telescope a little bit because I'm I'm getting uh, uh, I think I need to go west a little and up too far. If I do that, and I'm going to go. Uh, I've gone too far. Let's go. Yep, wrong direction again. <laughs> I'm just trying to eliminate as much of the uh, vignetting as I can. Because some of that is... Um, yep, wrong way again. Yep, wrong way again. But I think you're getting the uh, picture. We'll go back and take another flight. I probably had all I needed back then. All right, I'm going to take another uh, quick capture. I like that one better. And it's knocking it off. And I'm going to take another quick capture. So I've taken about five, maybe six flat frames. Um, now that that's done, um, I'm going to uh, get out of this program and I'm going to bring up uh, Auto Stacker. Um, and let me uh, clean up my screen a little bit. And, okay. So let's bring up Auto Stacker and open up one of these flat frames. I use a, an external a hard drive. And let's take one of the last frames that I took. And let's open that up. And there it is. And all you do at this time, after you open it up, is you go up to Image Calibration and you say uh, Create Master Frame. So you, all you do is open the file and create a master frame. And I'm going to go back to my uh, directory and where I took the flats. And I'm going to call this master. If I can spell. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, wait to finish saving and then open Alright. Let's open one of the surface videos and let's go back and we'll go to Sun and um, let's go, let's just pick any one. And this was what I was imaging this morning. And of course you see the spots. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've loaded the um, the AVI file, I'm going to go to Image Calibration and I'm going to go Load Master Flat and 
uh, I've got it saved in the uh, directory flats that was taken on 1015, so I'm going to load it. And watch the magic as those are all uh, removed. Now I do have, because of that vignetting I was telling you about, it went dark in the way that's going to show up. It's going to show up brighter. But I'll end up cropping out uh, part of what's going on on the edges all the way around uh, to kind of uh, focus in on the uh, uh, sunspot anyway. And then from there, we're going to uh, click on Surface, Local, Analyze, Auto Size, and we're good to go. So we're going to analyze um, the work we did. Emil Crycamp, who developed uh, AutoStacker, has a new version that we ought to be seeing any time. Uh, he hoped to have it out a year ago, December, and uh, I think COVID stopped a lot of uh, plans for a lot of people. But I can't wait to see what he's going to uh, come up with. Okay, it's finished the uh, analyzation, and uh, it's telling me that a percentage of my uh, images that I took are above the line and a percentage are below the line. This is the halfway mark above or better than the ones below and the ones at the very top are the very best. And uh, what you need to know is or what you need to guess at is I wonder what percentage of all of my frames represent the top 25 percent. And although I don't have a clue on how to interpret this jaggedy graph uh, I'm going to guess that since it, here's the halfway mark, and we're at about, uh, this is 75%, so we're probably at about 60, between 60 and 70%. So what it's telling me is at least 60% of my files are better than 50%. Uh, 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 it's at the halfway mark. So what we'll do is, I took a thousand frames. If you look in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see uh, the number of frame. It's a thousand and five frames that I took, eight bit. And so what I'm going to do is uh, keep. Uh, let's say we're going to keep uh, thirty-five percent of the frames, and uh, which is significantly less. Uh, here's at the very top, right here. Uh, this is 25%, so this would be represent about the top 20, 35%. So I'm going to take the top 35%, and uh, I need to apply a grid, and I'm going to use the automatic feature. I'm going to go to 104, and that looks fine. And with that being said, I think I'm going to go to a finer grid, which represents the distance between um, between these uh, squares, these red dots in pixels. So um, let's go ahead and stack these. That looks fine. It's probably more detailed than I want. Okay, it finished its process. So what we're going to do now is uh, quickly process it going to uh, Registacks. And uh, I think I have it on that laptop. I uh, certainly should. I have to move my fire box. <clears throat> Let's see, where is it? It should be down here. Uh, there it is, way on the end. Gosh, things are going slow. Oh, it's not my, I keep thinking I'm on my desktop because I'm controlling my laptop from inside my home. And uh, I'll uh, show you really quick what I'm talking about. This is my uh, outside camera if it's working. Wi-Fi's been 
really slow today. Uh, well, behind the umbrella is the silver camera. I imaged last night with these two uh, uh, kits, and then the solar equipment's behind that. But at any rate, uh, <clears throat> let's go to uh, let's go down to the drive and find. Uh, and there's my, uh, by the way, if you save at different folders, this means I saved 35, it's the percent 35 uh, frames that I saved. <clears throat> I didn't know that for a long time. I didn't know what was happening. I'm slow. Uh, nope, I don't want to raise that. Okay. Uh, this was a black and white image, so there's no point in uh, manipulating color. There's nothing much to do over here. In some cases, I might, I might uh, take the gamma, and uh, which is like a curves, and try to create a, an S curve to bring out some of the contrast, but uh, I'm not going to do that. I have a scheme that I use for uh, uh, the sun. I call it Solar One, and uh, I have several of them, by the way, but this is a pretty moderate or a modest uh, uh, application of some of the uh, of wavelets over here and uh, so let's uh, go ahead and uh, do all and the reason for doing all of this is to show you that there is zero dust uh, on this uh, image none it's been all removed and uh, what you're seeing really is the uh, sun plus this artifact of brightness up here that came from uh, my field of view not being able to take the entire sun in and uh, consequently I had some vignetting in the corners so uh, that's the way it works um, I will uh, at any rate uh, say goodbye to you I hope this was helpful and uh, there are a few other trips, tips and tricks that I use when imaging the sun, and I'm going to put those together and share those. But I hope everybody has a great rest of the day, and I hope your imaging of deep space or solar, planetary, uh, is uh, without the uh, our greatest adversary, the clouds. So clear skies to everybody.